Okay, good morning. December 11th, this is a meeting of the subcommittee, the reuse subcommittee of the, what is the uh, BPW called now? Uh, the called PWAC, the Public Works Advisory Commission. The Public Works Advisory Commission. So, does that change our status at all? As a well, that's the first announcement that I'm so pleased to say. Uh, um, well, uh, that's not on the agenda yet. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I brought Whoa. it up. But um, can can we have people had a chance to read the minutes from last time? I have minutes here. Okay. Sure. <coughs> Woo. Uh, while uh, people are going over the minutes, uh, Ro, why don't you fill us in on PWAC? Well, um, the uh, the the um. Um, all of, oh my goodness, I can't talk, I can't think. We'll edit this for you in the final Yeah, thing. thank yeah. you, good. Um, <clears throat> essentially, we're starting over and we're coming up with new uh, rules and meetings, but um, Mayor Narkowitz called Ned and said very specifically he wanted the reuse committee to continue. So mm. this is huge because first of all, he's recognizing it, and second of all, he's endorsing it. Third, we're legitimized. The reuse committee is legitimized. Thanks. Okay. Great. We're under the the public under the commission, but the point is, is that you we had to decide. The tree commission is gone. The tree, um, the tree committee, committee is gone, and uh, the uh, 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 let's see what else. The, we're not part of the com the uh, parking commission anymore. Anyway, other changes you don't care about, but we care about, but but you don't care about. It. But but the reuse committee stays intact as part of the Public Works Advisory Commission. So we still report to the Public Works Advisory Commission. Yes. yes. Okay. And the members remain the same on that board? Like you're still. Oh yes, that? everything okay. stay. We think everything pretty much stays yeah, the same. Right. It's, it's amazing how little has changed. <laughs> <laughs> the labels. Okay. Yeah. Right. Great. <coughs> Essentially, they won't be able to to vote to set rates at their committee meeting. That's the primary change. They make a recommendation to Ned, who who makes the decision. And what about approval well, of uh, budgets I'm for projects? Sorry, I missed. So I did, we'll I didn't still want be to involved in that. But um, but the approvals won't come from the but, DPW. But well, really, the, the, the city council. <coughs> right. So they, it's all. It, it becomes instead of an advisory issue. A political issue. Yeah, that's the so big change. Really. Yeah, you want to reiterate that? No, this, uh, I was saying the same thing that that the uh, authority goes to, to the city council for okay. rate setting. For rate, right. well, and maybe even broader, but mm -hmm. they've always had a lot of authority. I, I don't know if that wasn't clearly spelled out, but okay. so the, in my mind, this the change is really not highly significant. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Peter, did you have a chance to go over the minutes? Yes, I'm um, fine. Uh, I need uh, either changes or a motion to approve. Move to approve. Uh, yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. No, uh, no changes. No one has any changes to these minutes. Okay. Great. Uh, so recenter update celebration debrief. Who's in charge of that, Susan? Well, I'm. I'll just. I know it can't start. be Peter because he was in the cement the entire time. <laughs> I'll just start. We had a really nice morning and or afternoon, and Mac uh, had some lovely uh, appreciation certificates that he passed that great. out. Anybody and I'll let him explain a little bit more about that. I have some pictures here that I printed out for people Ooh. that I hadn't. Um, and there are more pictures than that. I just didn't know which medium would be the best to share them with you, so I printed yeah, them out. These are good. Mac, do you have anything to add? We were thrilled that. Um, not, I'm just completely blanking out. Bob was able to attend, Bob Reckman, mm -hmm. and we had, who else Who else showed up? Uh, Ned showed up, Ned and Dave, yeah. mm -hmm. Dave Valletta, and... Alex Gislin was there. Yeah, several of the gatekeepers came. Uh, I think it was just great to pause in, in, <laughs> in all the work that we've done and just 
acknowledge all the players that have helped us and uh, helped us to build this thing. And so I was really pleased with the way it turned out. Um, who's there from the original committee? Sue Carlin. Sue Carbon. Sue Carbon. Uh -huh. And um, Joan Wiener. Mm -hmm. I think those are the only two. Because all the other names. Well, we didn't really. In, uh, we in, we invited everybody who's been actively involved in this. Uh huh. So for the grand opening in the spring, we'll certainly invite. A, yeah, that would be good. Because right? we, we owe a lot to that original committee, right. and they were so frustrated by the inaction of the city of Northampton on a reuse center after working so hard that uh, I think that would really be a good gesture. Yes, we've definitely been standing on their shoulders, and I agree. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to encourage members of this committee to help us plan the grand opening, and mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that Great. later on. Um, anything else about the celebration, Deepri? No, we wanted, <coughs> I wanted to thank everybody who contributed. Ned bought the pizza out of his own pocket, and... Really? Um, well, he's trying David. to get it paid for. Is he? Yeah. Well, it's, it was. He, he, there was an initial attempt, and he he uh, that was unsuccessful. So I think he was willing to pay for it out of pocket if need be. So the fact that he was willing to take that risk is lovely. Mm -hmm. And David Shearer nice. brought some <coughs> hot co um, hot cider, and it was just a really nice. It was. It was really fun. Um, access strategy vote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I wanted to bring that uh, in our Tuesday meeting recently. David Shearer had brought up the concept of the, the access boat, and, uh, and he, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he had a different, um, or a different thought from the one that we had talked about and, and pretty much had agreement about as far as the access strategy to the recenter. Can we can we and go over what our Yes, I'll go over that. All, all so I, I just wanted I, we don't have to take long. I just wanted David an opportunity to explain his v view and that we could then have an official vote so that we didn't just assume that everyone was on the same page. Right. So okay. essentially what we had decided was that we would have a second sticker which would cost about say ten dollars and would give people access only to the Glendale Road transfer station for purposes of using the recenter. They would also have of the ability to dispose of bulky waste only at the recenter. So for ten dollars you would get a recenter sticker <coughs> and that would be that would be for people who live out of town who want to use the recenter people who live perhaps in an apartment building and don't have need of the transfer stations. Um, so this would be a special sticker for those special cases. For people who live as residents in Northampton and want to use the transfer station uh, and perhaps Locust Street at, and other Glendale Road services, they can still buy the transfer station sticker people who are on a certain the, the, forms of the public assistance for $25. For $25. People who are on public assistance and certain types of public assistance um, now get those transfer station stickers for free and they would continue doing so. So so many people would have free access to the recenter. Um, and so that was that was the, the plan. And these these stickers would also be based on the fiscal year, so they would be very similar to the transfer station stickers. They would just be a second sticker. And this was Debbie's, uh, Deb's idea, because we used to have two different kinds of stickers. So it's not, it's not a big stretch for anybody um, as far as that goes. So we had talked about that last time, and then David, if you want to explain you what you're... one thing uh -huh. that I think is important. Um, we also <coughs> thought it would be good to have it as not just a sticker, but as a membership in the Reed Center. So it's a $10 annual membership. <coughs> well, it, yeah, it's a little, it's, um, uh, it's, re it's not rhetoric. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's wordsmithing in a way, but I think Peter's point is that when people feel they belong to something, they're much more committed and willing to, to make it work, and, and there's a, a spirit and a, 
patriot not patriotism but mm. you know community yeah. kind of feeling so so peter had suggested that we Actually, call it more of idea. yeah we, we consider it more of a membership and not just a i think it's an important distinction that's that's really smart right so david can you explain what your thoughts mm. were had been i'll try to keep it to one sentence because it's it's just a dead concept uh, and that was to read that the, from the board's point of view, we should have one sticker, and therefore it would be the twenty-five dollar sticker. But that's that's not going to happen. Ned is happy with a ten dollar sticker, and I, I don't. I'm not in the way. Well, no, I, and I don't. I'm not saying you are in the way, but I think that it's important for the committee to understand your logic. It, so you're. So David suggesting had suggested that we don't have a separate sticker and that we just allow people to buy the $25 sticker to right. get access and that that would include people from out of town and correct which is another issue which is a whole which other we issue. don't have to right get into. Right. right right so that was david's thought and 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 i assume your logic is because it would add it would uh, increase the the income well, from a, the stickers a little bit, and but it's consistency also. Okay. Right, and simplicity. Think, I don't think we want a proliferation of stickers. Right, right. So uh, uh, that 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 opinion wasn't expressed very uh, loudly at this last meeting, when, and it was assumed that we all agreed that the ten dollar mm -hmm. sticker was what everybody wanted. And I just wanted to make sure that David had a, cho a chance to express his view, and. You're saying uh, Ned is happy with the $10 arrangement mm. that we proposed. So if somebody, if there isn't any <coughs> other discussion, we can have an official vote to see which way the committee. Did we not have an official vote last time? No, we did not. <coughs> we talked about it. Okay. We assumed. We were going to talk about bikes as well, whether or not to allow bikes to have free access. Right. Right. Well, I think that we that. decided we we did talk about that. We decided ten dollars was not a big deal, right? As no. whether to charge bikes the same amount or free will be discussed next month. Thank you. No, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I yeah, I, I had remembered it the way that Roger had said is that uh, oh, it was unlikely anyone was going to bike all the way out there or or it, take advantage of the situation and drive their bike out there and then bike into the because uh, that was really? one of the so ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have a, actually a simple solution for that, which just be take a, you know, green magic marker, and if they, if they get a free sticker, but it's going to be have a big green mark on it that says this is for a bike. Well, it has to go on the bike anyway, so. Sure. <laughs> well, but people could get one and put it on their car. That we worried about people doing that. Of okay. So, do you want to make the, the proposal, <coughs> Roger, that we allow? We design bikes a in? sticker that can be marked for bikes only. Or. I, I don't understand why it has to be a marked for it. If it's stuck on the bike and the bike has to be there and and the material has to leave on the bike, then why does it need to be a special well, sticker? Well, instead of having a third sticker, one just for bikes, we would have the regular recenter sticker. Mm -hmm. But I have a box or a line or something that if it was you're getting it for free because it's for your bike, right. you would check it off. When, so uh, when you get a sticker, it's applied to the vehicle at the moment that you buy it. Yeah, okay. you couldn't just carry it. It is normal. Oh, you'd have to have your bike there. You'd have right. to have your bike there. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Well, so we don't have to have a third sticker at all. <coughs> That's how it works, right? Right. When, when you buy a Northampton sticker. Right. 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 Uh, how is that? When you drive in, you ask God for the sticker? And right. She, she goes, puts she it up. Puts it yeah, on. she comes out and puts it on your house. It, it makes sense. It's, it's, it's labor intensive, but it mm -hmm. makes sense. In Amherst, we have problems sometimes with people not sticking them to their car and giving them, you know, loaning them to their friends. And so. Okay. Um, it, it just makes it a lot, a lot cleaner. Okay. Does, does somebody want to propose that we, um, you know, but, well, officially There's still to? discussion going on. So is discussion closed? Do people want to talk about this more, about David's thoughts, just about how it was expressed? Um, Roger, what you could do is just read the proposal as it's in the minutes, and then uh, we can take a vote if that's oh, accepted. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Well, but but, but we should the bike piece. Can, yeah. we, can we articulate the bike piece first, and then we'll do the other one? Uh, well, it's all one proposal, right? Oh, okay. yeah. We propose the, so the BP. To, does or, some, yeah. someone needs to make a proposal in order for us to vote. Let on. me just read this. Okay, we propose now to the PWAC. Um, uh, let's see. 
oh, sorry, I'm sorry. We'll have a dual permit system. Low-income people already get the regular yes. dump permit for free. Others, non-residents, apartment renters, can buy a special sticker for just the recenter <coughs> for $10. Uh, second car would require additional sticker. It would allow access to the recenter and disposal center for bulky objects. We will have m to market this to the public in a thoughtful way because we don't want people primarily using it for bulky waste. That's just a if we get things that are brought to the recenter that we can't dispose of, then we'll be able to do that with this sticker. Um, we will not charge the bikes. The bike stickers will be free. Okay, so we, be the same we just need order. that so. cut down a little bit uh, in order for it to be a proposal that John can write down for the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually two proposals. One is the $10 sticker and then the bike piece, I think, is well, separate. It can all be one. Yeah, I think they, it's one for it's access. It's, it's, it's an access it's, proposal. Okay. The bike sticker is free. Is the proposal right? But one then you're voting for is both of those things. If you That's don't right. agree with one of them, well then then you don't oh, agree then with the proposal. You have more discussion, right. and then okay, fair enough. No, I got it. Okay, so uh, John, do you want to read it back? What the proposal is? <coughs> sure. Uh, we're gonna we're agree we're proposing to issue a second sticker for $10 that would give people access to the recenter and bulky waste disposal. People who would buy this would be those who live out of town and those who live in, uh, in town in apartments. Uh, we'll call it a membership so people have some ownership and bicycles will get this for free. Bicycle owners. Um, I'm not sure why it's relevant for us to have the apartment part of that in the proposal. Yeah, true. Um, I just, I, it's anyone all I want to do is, is make it the proposal should be very specific to what this uh, access strategy is. How about those without a regular dump sticker? Right. right. Can yes. Anyone with a regular dump sticker <coughs> has access. Right. And anyone with a $10 reuse sticker has access to the recenter and only bulky, bulky waste rich. disposal. Yeah. <coughs> and should we, should we say this includes non Northampton residents, to be clear about that? Yeah, I think we should. Who live out of town. Uh, oh, yeah, J John had that in there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And those who live in town but don't have the regular right. sticker. Right. Okay. You want to okay. give that back to us again, John? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, but don't have the regular sticker. Um, so, the proposal is to issue a second sticker for $10 that would give people access to the recenter and bulky waste disposal. People who would buy this would be those who live out of town and those who live in town but don't have a, a regular sticker. Uh, I'm putting in, we call it a membership. Do you want me to take that out? No, that's good. No, I like it. Oh, we call it a membership so people have some ownership. But bicycle owners will be given the sticker for free. That sounds good. That's good. That's good. Is that a second, Peter? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The advantage of, another advantage of calling it a membership and, and, and promoting that concept is that it's another special thing that you get for free when you buy a transfer station sticker. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a transfer station sticker, you now get a free membership <laughs> to <laughs> the recent. So is um, that approved? Did it? Uh, well, no, we so haven't taken, that's that we haven't taken I'm a vote yet. Okay. Take this vote, and then I was going to bring up okay. your issue. All in favor of the proposal as John stated it and Peter seconded it. Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Ro? So, so what I wanted to be clear on, or what I'm not clear on, is that now the the um, the commission do we take it to the commission or do we take it yes. to Ned and then ask them if they we the take it to the commission all right but Ned has given his endorsement of this concept he I told him about it and yeah. he was comfortable with it and I guess David also spoke with him about well, it well he's, he's comfortable with it with a ten dollar was the idea of a separate sticker and mm -hmm. the ten dollar fee I don't know if if from his point of view the uh, bulky waste items should be included. I, I spoke with him about that <coughs> and he, I think he's comfortable with okay. that as well. Because he'll ultimately have but the decision. The whole thing is subject to their approval, whatever we mm -hmm. vote. Yes. Right, so, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And, and the commission can only endorse it because it will be Ned's decision. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay. I think that the commission is fine with with it. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't think it's a big issue. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Winter goals. Winter goals. Um, <clears throat> I think this may be a better time because Rose's still here. Um, 
you know, we, we wrote up all this stuff about <coughs> what we're going to accept, not accept, et cetera, et cetera. And before you roll your eyes, um, <laughs> we've been out there now actually experiencing what is thrown into the, into the waste. Okay, we, we had our dumpster and there was almost nothing in it, so they took that dumpster away. Um, the thing that's quite obvious is, A, because we've been using it and how much we see going into the dumpster is wood, usable wood. Diana pulled out some, some beautiful hardwood. Um, Someone gave this actually before they were in the dumpster. Oh, um, well, I think we can really um, work to reduce what's coming uh, uh, from the, um, what do you call the containers? Dumpster. The, the dumpster containers. <clears throat> we can reduce that by like 8 to 10 percent by pulling out usable wood. Um, A, we can s stack, we now have some racks that we could actually use as wood racks in the adjoining room to do it like they do at the lumber yard, you know, put wood on there. Encourage people who have leftover wood from projects, etc., to bring it out there. Um, I just see, s I mean, it's. This is all untreated wood, Peter? It's perfectly good wood. Um, sometimes there's nails in it. So we would have various categories. We'd have a definite firewood category, which is not treated, not painted, et cetera, et cetera, but with nails in it, et cetera. I see this is maybe a job for the, the PWAX to um, take it up as, as how do we deal with this with the city solicitor, maybe, uh, Alan Sewell, so that we can have people go into what's a, a you know, collection area for, I'm, I'm thinking mostly the problem is going to come with the stuff with nails in it and, you know, legal issues over that. But I, th I think we can work that out with, uh, Mac had suggested a smaller dumpster for, for firewood. But this is something we can like work on right away because it's identifiable and if our job is to reduce the waste stream, well, right. here's a perfect example. And I know politically it's hard for you to maybe take it up with me because... No, it's not, it's not hard, it's just yeah. that there's, it's not, um, it's new, yeah. and there are some other issues that con can complicate it a little bit, but not necessarily a lot. So I did speak about it with David Valletta briefly. It's, it's something that we need to figure out um, on the DPW end, mm -hmm. how it would work, mm -hmm. and and the concern is that it not get out of hand as far as a storage issue or a, a fire hazard, those types of things, or a safety hazard. If there's nails in it, maybe we don't want to go there. If we have volunteers who are willing to denail everything, that's another issue. Mm -hmm. So, so we just have to work some things out. I think it's great to start talk, start the discussion and start talking about it. Yeah. I don't know that I. Um, I don't know that we can spend a whole lot of time today because it wasn't on the agenda and we can talk about it at our Tuesday meeting and then and I can work <coughs> on things behind the scenes as well. Just add, um, I was willing, and anybody else wants to go talk to Ned separately if it mm -hmm. was a problem for you or involve the board. Um, the, the only thing I want to say about what Peter's saying is it is new, but mm -hmm. it may be that the recenter is going to be more than just a reuse center. and. For us to use the winner to come up with these new initiatives is not necessarily uh, out of bounds. Of Absolutely not. Right. <laughs> actually, though, no, it's not Absolutely actually not. new. Uh, no, right. Because up until, I don't know, a year or so ago, they had a designated dumpster out there for clean wood. It could be, it could have nails in it, um, but no painted, no pressure preserved, or anything like that. And it was over by where the recenter is now. And I know that because I dismantled a shed at my house and some of the wood was clean and I got to put it in there and there was no fee for that because apparently it was, I, what I was told at the time was that it was going to be crushed and I, I can't remember if it was going to be used for wood chips or for, for heating, you know, like the Cooley Dickinson mm -hmm. burns wood, mm -hmm. wood chips like that. Yeah. And that the nails were not an issue. Um, so there's, it, and, and then it disappeared, and I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was. I assume there was some kind of problem with it. So anyway, that's a question. Right, so, so why don't Peter and I work on this, to, and, and I'll work on my avenue. I mean, we can talk right. outside. There's one, one more little ingredient keep, here. Keep <coughs> pushing, I guess, is what I'm I talked to Jonesy. Um, the capacity of those dumpsters is 
with a truck that carries them is somewhere around 20 tons. And I asked him, what's the average weight that goes into the dumpster? And he said, oh, probably a couple of tons. So, yeah, and, it, it and depends I can, on what's in the dumpster. Yeah, but I can tell you the reason. The way we're doing it now, which is dumping things, however they get some of those things in there, I don't know. And they're like higgledy-piggledy, and it does not make good use of the, you know, you could get five times space. more in mm -hmm. if it was mm -hmm. packed. Jonesy mm -hmm. says, no way is the city going to allow people to walk into well, we've got to work this out. You know, we can't have the legal department like taking every possible um, thing that could go wrong and say, "Oh no, no, that that could go wrong. That could go wrong." Well, like, I don't we think could it's be a sued. You know, da, yeah, da, da, I don't da, think da. it's a question of that, and I understand your frustration. Yeah. It's certainly we can problem solve around that. There are places, there are communities that use um, uh, electric, you know, uh, what are they, caterpillars and stuff to smash things down yeah. and break things apart so they can get more stuff in the bins. There's, there's even a roller that I saw with it, this arm with a roller, and they they put it down and they, and they smash stuff and. I'm sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> um, they smash stuff and it's got this kind of like a big roller thing that mm. kind of goes back and forth. So mm. there are different ways that you can make sure that you maximize what you're getting. From um, so I, I'm not sure that we need to take this discussion through to the end, but I love this idea of making it a winter project to talk about multi-uses for the reuse center or expansion of purpose of the reuse center. Because I'm very interested in things like paint and uh, having a, a paint collection the way mm -hmm. the city of Holyoke does. So, and I'm sure other people have other ideas. So that should be one of the winter goals. I would, well, the problem is that the, win we, the winter, you know, we don't, they're only a few months long and, and we have limited resources to make these things happen. So I don't want to add too much to the list. I think that we need to capture these ideas and make sure that they don't get lost. I just don't want to, promise that we're going to be able to achieve all these things over the winter because <coughs> things take a lot longer as we've learned than than you think they might. We could have a discussion though to make sure that yeah, we Yeah, all I'm proposing is to start the discussion. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Not to open in April with a paint collection and wood collection, but you got to start it at some point. Yep. And the winter seems yep. like a good time. Yeah, mm -hmm. Expansion opportunities. Exactly. Yep. So why don't we suggest why don't we have that as a I think it should be a committee actually, a, se a separate committee. A separate committee to meet and talk. Yeah, about the same way that there's well, been a reuse already, committee. Well, we have a, we have a recenter committee, so. But the re okay, we want I mean, the recenter committee to invite people to come, and we'll have an event where we brainstorm. Well, the recenter committee can do that if they want. It just seems to me the recenter committee has plenty to do as it is. The recenter committee, to me, has been about getting it up and running and how the management of the recenter is going to go. These expansion opportunities, if the recenter committee feels like there's something that falls within there. Uh, uh, you know, discussion okay. area. Then, right. then let's just continue it that way. We don't have to re. Well, re chances it. are the recenter committee is going to want to be involved in a brainstorming session mm -hmm. anyway. So, so why not just have them pick a day and invite, you know, and say let's let's have a brainstorming session, or or we can do it in this meeting. We can make it an agenda item for next month. Let's do. That. I think we should do an agenda item. Next agenda month. item. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. And keep it within this committee for for now at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of okay. different possibilities for expansion. So yeah. So very useful. I want to consider as many as we can think of and then it pare it down. Anybody, sorry, I'm too far. But yeah. if anybody, especially from your committee, would be able to liaise with the city solicitor, whoever's in charge of the legal part of this, because that's going to be the, I think, the major stumbling block. Are you talking about the wood again? Yes. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think we even need to go there yet. We need to figure out. I, I think that there's a lot of acceptance within the board, within the DPW for this concept. The gatekeepers so suggested I mean, I, it. I just don't want you to. I don't want you to immediately assume that it's the legal department that's putting putting a kibosh. It's not necessarily the case. So I think we should just go through the due process mm -hmm. and see wh what happens. Actually, it was Scott, not Jones. Yeah, I was Scott, mm -hmm. say. Scott was Scott. the one who had the conversation. Right. And um, he said, "No way is the city going to allow." Okay, so, well, so and they won't allow people in. But there are other ways that you can that. solve right. the problem. Right. So that's having that's that's one goal for this winter. What are right. some of the other goals, Susan? You wrote four up on the board. Right. So um, I unfortunately we had a, a list that we generated at our last meeting and it's 
it's up on the wall, <laughs> so I, I didn't copy them down. But these were some of them, and I think Mac, you might have some others. Yeah, let me, let me see. <coughs> so <coughs> two, to to uh, well, make sure that we. I'm sorry. There's one on here playing the openings of the repair cafes. Playing the repair cafes, uh, but but <coughs> that that's a winter. I mean, there are things that we have to do and things that we'd like to do. Yeah, and these are things that we have to do. The, the planning, the repair cafes, we're not necessarily going to have a slate of them when we open in April. If somebody wants to take that on and start organizing that, that's fine. But to, to open our door, in order to open our doors, these are the things that we need to Susan, the repair cafe to me that's is under exactly the thing we just talked expansion. about. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, so I, I think part of our discussion in January will be to, to brainstorm and then identify the ones that we want to prioritize and really work on first. So the Repair Cafe might be one of those, and we might want to have uh, some events scheduled when we open. Um, but but it's something that yeah, it's not I a must-have. I didn't want to talk about that today. Uh, repair Cafes? Yeah. OK. Can, can we hold that we thought hold, and, sure. and put up other must-dos must here? Um. <clears throat> oh, yeah, parking. Parking, lay, we're we have to deal with layout basically in the space and in the <coughs> area and traffic flow. So. I'm going to change this and say interior layout and then traffic flow and parking. Okay. And then and something else. Well, the guidelines that you wrote that includes the list of what is what's acceptable and what's uh -huh. not. Okay, that's a biggie. Um, and the volunteer manual you got up there, and uh, recruiting and training volunteers. Um, that's a tough. Which is yeah, that's a big one that number one category because it includes training, manual training, and so and forth. And also scheduling volunteers. Yeah. Okay. Creating a schedule that right. so we n need right. to know how many volunteers and how many yeah. slots we need. Good to point, fill. David. And we got the publicity up there. That's a big one. Um, <coughs> and we were talking today about membership guidelines. Uh, signage is another one. Um, signage directing people into the space, listing the rules, so forth. That include delineating the space so people don't go over and bring extra stuff and try to sneak it into the Yeah, that's probably center. with the traffic flow, yeah. 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 Yeah, we talked about at one point having cement those, what do they call those, barricades, jersey, jersey, jersey barriers, barriers yeah. um, and it's not going to work because Scott needs to be able yeah. to get in there with the truck to pull out the, mm -hmm. the, the That's truck. something. Yeah. Rhoda, did you have a comment? Oh, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting who, who facilitating. Um, yes, so I, I bring another thing from the board that would go <coughs> on this, which is when they're under the impression, at least I got the impression that, oh, we can start collecting items now. I don't think we're even close to that, but but that should be a decision where and when items can start coming in. I think, yeah, you I know, when I, and yeah, when I, Peter I mean, and the gatekeepers have been already collecting stuff for us on the far left, and that okay. space is getting pretty full. We have That's another space. We have another space just to the left of ours where we've been keeping some stuff, and that's getting pretty full. Yeah. Although we're lessening it now that we're using a lot of wood. And then our space, we have some stuff in there too, but we still need to be able to paint in there and put shelves up. So right. we don't. So what I've been saying to people who talk to me about it is great. I'm glad you got stuff. Just see if you can save it a few more months in your garage or basement or right. whatever, and then the, will the the river will flow. You right. Know, in, right. In April, basically. So. I don't think we can really accommodate a whole lot more out there at this well, that, point. That was my feeling as well, being out of it. But, but my concern is maybe setting a date because even at the time, right. there might be an inundation of lots of stuff of people's that people have been saving for right. this. Right. And we and it seems like, if I could say, we don't want it all at once because there won't be shelter for it. There won't right. be a way to do it. So, so <coughs> we might how we process accepting items as well. Right. So it might be like, okay, we're going to have uh, a wood a wood Saturday. We're going to have a, a uh, 
electric fry a Saturday. Well, I don't know. Some a, mm -hmm. a processing of accumulated yeah. items. So I don't know. Yeah, but, but I yeah, think another good. there's a, there's a lot of wild cards involved in this, yeah. and one is we don't really know what kind of stuff is going to move fast and what kind of stuff is yeah, not going to move fast exactly. and how quickly our face our space will fill up and how quickly it will drain you right know? that's right. all going to be just that's going to be part of the excitement of it is like it's going to be really <laughs> different every week we do this right. i think you know right. Right. so um i've been getting calls people who say i have a, an old stove that i'd like to donate right. to you guys and so the, the sooner we get out our a, a real kind of succinct list of this is what we <coughs> won't take, the better, so that we don't want people storing things for the winter and then being disappointed when we don't take them. Okay, I'd like to end discussion on this subject because it's all we we have to get to these winter goals and uh, but we recognize the fact that we have to set dates for uh, what for when we're going to take. <coughs> right. Yeah. So, so we don't. This is more information. We wanted to share with you what what goals we have, and see if there were others that you guys thought that we should focus on. And these were the these were the must dos, as I right. mentioned. One last thing that we didn't put up there is we talked about creating kind of a referral network so that if people bring us stuff and we don't, it's too big for us to have out there, yes. or because or yes. our space yeah. is filling up, that we will be able to say, okay, this person is looking for this, this person has it, connect them, you know? Yeah. Uh, like well, a free cycle. We talked about a board basically. or, you know, whatever yeah. it's going to be, referral Helping process. people with free cycle, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are we going to be allowed to use any outdoor space for storage? We haven't totally explored that. There is a space on the outside, um, but right now, you know, Scott pushes the snow up there in the winter, and um, we're not, we haven't really <coughs> talked to him about how important it is to keep that open. But so that's something to explore. I mean, it, it's possible we could put tarps out or something from, and uh, if if they didn't care during the warm weather, and we could use that as a place to sort store surplus stuff if we get a big run of stuff. Because uh, yeah. I, I think you need to plan for that. Yeah. Yeah. We well, do have stadium seating Plan for, for what, concerts David? on the mm -hmm. berm. Um, having <laughs> more stuff than the building can hold, and there may be things that can <clears throat> withstand weather that you're going to get that don't need to be indoors. Right. Mm -hmm. Where where is that space that you're talking about? Just on on the outside of the building, between the east building side. and the berm, and the, and on the, 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 the east side. side. Yeah, yeah. Right. the flat space. Right, the flat space, which we talked about as a possible sculpture garden too. <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering, is there any way to have on our reuse website real-time photography of things that come in so that people without having actually to go to the recenter? One place I saw it posted on YouTube, they do a YouTube posting in the morning. Somebody goes out there with a camera and walks <coughs> around and then they post it on YouTube. Because I think that would be a great way to shop at the recenter. I mean, you get rid of a lot of more stuff a lot more quickly. It's a great idea, too, for things that that are sticking around that we wouldn't expect to be sticking around. <coughs> I, I, you know, um, we can certainly post stuff on Facebook. That's the easiest thing to do. Uh, I can check in to see what we can do. I'd like to get more pictures in general on the, but on the website. But we can upload a video on there too. Sure. To on to Facebook. On Facebook. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be a great Saturday, early Saturday morning post. The first gatekeepers that come in, that's the first thing they do. Do a commercial. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, no, yeah. They, there's a place in um, the University of Minnesota has a really great Recenter type place, and they po they they post pictures of what comes in, and it's gone, you know. Right? Mm -hmm. Great. Get some high school kids. Anybody with any yeah, talent anybody. to go in there. So make it so cool. we we have these winter goals. Is this something that the reuse center, the recenter committee, is going to work on, or is this something that we're planning on discussing in these meetings? Uh, the recenter is going to be working on them. If people would like to help out, we talked about maybe having working groups on various topics. So if, if any of the larger group is interested in helping out on certain topics, contact one of us. I, other than that, I don't think we need a whole lot more unless there's more discussion or ideas that people want to contribute. Okay. Yeah. Right basically breaking down two categories, site-specific and general information advertising. 
mm -hmm. concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think one, the, uh, the recent people working on the recenter itself would be that would be good. That would be a good one for the to the uh, site specific stuff. You know I'm what sorry, I mean? say that again. The site specific specific stuff. The people who've been there uh -huh. and have seen the flow. It would uh -huh. be nice to have them working on that. Right. And then guidelines and stuff we can all work on. Mm -hmm. Subcommittees for that. Mm -hmm. We have a few people uh, that have volunteered that are interested in doing publicity and stuff, so we can think about contacting them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the work is going on on the recenter too. The physical work we're still going out there and doing shelving and sheathing and that kind of stuff, and gutter work and various other things that we're doing. And as you can see from the pictures from the celebration, Peter is is especially been um, uh, a, a worker bee. He didn't even, I think he broke for a little bit of pizza, but he worked through the whole <coughs> thing on the cement because of the timing with the cold weather. Mm -hmm. So I, we appreciate him and, and his and tenacity and on it. Diana doing the gutters in the rain now. <laughs> 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 the See where the all. water's going. <laughs> Let's just say we have some passionate volunteers. Okay, uh, so how <coughs> does, uh, Oh, event updates. Well, I, actually, I'd rather go into um, discuss 2015 lineup because the recenter really impacts the 2015 lineup, or it may. So um, I'm just going to skip event updates for uh, a minute. What about um, to the toy exchange this weekend? Just to make sure we don't. Yeah, no, we'll, okay. I'll, I'll definitely get it okay, in thanks. by 9:30. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> the one-day events you're thinking are going to be impacted by the recenter. Mm -hmm. But it's up to us. I mean, you know, how do, how do we want to do it? I mean, it, the the <coughs> the whole point of these recycling events was in place of a reuse center. I mean, that's how the idea came about because we didn't have a place. So. Um, just, uh, just to put it out there, we don't have to come to any major conclusions, but, but we wanted to start talking about the lineup for 2015, if there is going to be a lineup. Right. Just so, so yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Ro? I'm torn between thinking we're going to be overflowing with stuff and, and, and worrying about um, having too radical of change in terms of what we know. So I would propose that we do have a lineup for next year because these events have legs and they've built some knowledge. And given how the, the it seems like we ought to plan to do both. I know that makes more work and I know that that's, that's an issue, but we can always say <coughs> we will be canceling the October events because we're using the recenter for the, the, that instead. So I'm just throwing that out. Roger. Well, I, I would say that we would use next year as a way to, as an opportunity to look at these events and see how they <coughs> mesh. So each specific one, what can we take from that and bring to the recenter, or do we even need the event in the first place? We just do the regular slate and see how it works. Well, I, said, uh, I was going to say, or we could do a modified slate. There are some, one of the advantages <coughs> of the pop-up that I see is that they're very convenient for people. This is a really good location. <coughs> um, so it's, it's, it's convenient for people. They like the swap concept of everybody bringing it. It's almost like a flash mob for bulky rigid plastic. And everyone brings it on one day and you can shop just bulky rigid plastic. Whereas having a swap shop, it's, it trickles in. So it's a very different effect. So publicity is one. Two is the power of each event, like the bulky rigid swap. And the third is that um, <coughs> it's a really great opportunity next year to advertise the recenter, and to it's a it's a and fourth would be it's it's a really good public education opportunity. These these pop ups. So I'm not I'm not advocating that we do them forever, but I would my suggestion would be that we have a reduced schedule for next year and, and continue to have a couple events. Okay, Roger. Well, it, and if we ever get these repair cafes going, this would be an opportunity for people to bring stuff in. They would actually want you to hang on to that. Uh, you mean integrate the repair cafes with the with events? The, yeah, with the events. People bring stuff in and says, you know what, this isn't necessarily trash. We're going to have a repair cafe on fixing your toaster. And well, and it's something that's been established that the community looks for and, okay. and understands. It's almost like a pattern at this point or a... Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> another 
possibility it would be to, we can't do this with all of them, but some of them to think about shifting them over to the season when the recenter isn't open, you know, which will be the winter basically. I mean, we need an indoor space, that's a, but, that's an interesting but then we're not sort of competing with, with people's energies. I mean, I, I feel like my number one priority next year is going to be to see that the recenter works. I'm sure it's going to have a, it's going to demand a lot of attention, and there's going to be problems that have to be solved, and there's going to be coverage issues, and uh, that's just going to be my first priority, absolutely. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up, Matt, because my main concern with the events is uh, having been the volunteer coordinator is having enough people to man both. The recenter because they're both going to be on Saturdays, or if, if the events are traditionally on Saturday again. Um, so, number one, what is the cost of having these events? What is the real cost to the city? Uh, and the other is, uh, do we have enough volunteers? If you look at the toy event for this weekend, you'll see that we have uh, an embarrassment of riches in terms of volunteers. Hopefully, you know, if, if just half the people show up, we'll have enough people. <coughs> so, but those people are, you know, it's, it's a very um, kind of feel-good event, this, this toy event, and I don't know that we can get a regular commitment from the key club at the high school or some of these other volunteers. So that's, that's my main concern about having mm -hmm. both, and the idea that you have, Susan, of either scaling down the event or somehow having them be different because you don't need as many volunteers mm -hmm. if you only have rigid plastics and not bicycles and paper shredding and styrofoam and, and that sort of thing. So On the other hand, it's possible that we'll get it's likely that we will get more volunteers that want to, s to work at the recenter, and we'll, you know, so so sure to run to run something, and it's, and we're only open for a sh you know short period of time <coughs> on Saturday, so so, it, uh, and we're not expecting that there are going to need to be more than two to four volunteers out at the recenter, so it might not be that difficult, but we don't know. It's an, again, it's kind of a crapshoot. Diana? Yeah, I have had people that could approach me and said, when you get running, I want to be a volunteer there, so Great. I sure. think there are going to be some people who fit that niche. Great. Mm -hmm. right. um, I want to save the last five minutes for uh, the uh, this weekend's event, so we have two more minutes to discuss the uh, 2015 lineup. The only thing I see is the garden thing goes with the flower sales. Yeah, that's an right, SOS. That's, um, that's an SOS thing, yeah. and it was fairly simple, wasn't it, John? It was very so, simple. So that's something. Um, did it mostly. Yeah. Last year, we had uh, the bulky rigid plastic. It was also supposed to be the kids' stuff swap, and we dropped the kids' stuff swap and just did bulky rigid plastic, which technically could have been with in April as well. Um, so, so I mean, some of these things we could easily um, combine. Uh, combine. Deb <coughs> Debbie is gone, but it's my understanding that she um, is not wanting to pursue the art show next year. So that would be something that could p likely come off. Um, the, the tag sales. The other thing I would say about bulky rigid plastics is that there were a lot more people to take stuff in the spring than there were in the fall. And I think that is because people don't want to have to store stuff for the winter. Um, so we may want to think about a, a spring uh, event and not a <coughs> fall event. That would include bikes, anything up to a sportsy. It could include bikes, yeah. yeah. As long as we have an outlet for the bikes, the Bikes Not Bombs people was, were not able to come mm. this time. Bombs, so. bombs. Bikes, not bombs. Okay, I thought you said bumps. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another thing is the tag sale. You know, so we we really need to look at each of these to see if this is something that the whole committee wants to support, and we can do that next month, or um, we need to do it next month because we need yeah. to have a slate and. And that way I can look at all the dates and look at holidays and have that prepared like we did last year so we could bump out some um, Okay, so let's, let's postpone the rest of this discussion until uh, our January meeting. Uh, do we have a date for the January meeting, Susan? The January meeting uh, date we just need to talk about. Where we've been meeting the second or third Seven, Thursday of the... the eighth. So it would be the 8th or the 15th. Martin Luther King Day birthday is the 15th, and it's a weekend, but it's a 
Um, I think the, the kids, the schools are off on the 19th, yeah. So we could do the 8th? The 8th uh, work for people? I think the 8th sounds great. Okay. The earlier the better. There's a, I mean, I know it sounds like a long winter, but it's going to go fast. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, so January 8th at 8.30, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be leading the meeting. John, you'll be taking the notes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Matt, you have the floor for um, this weekend. Okay. Um, the toy, the Great Northampton Fourth Toy Exchange. The publicity machine has been rolled out and uh, I think has been effective so far, as far as I can tell. Um, as you said, that we, we're rich with volunteers. We have about 15 for each session coming, uh, both Friday night and Saturday morning. Um, if anybody else is interested in coming, I would tend to funnel them towards early Saturday, since that's the, the real uh, busy time. Um, we're ch doing a couple of changes um, that are designed to improve the traffic flow. Uh, one is the, is the raffle. Um, we're going to hold that uh, actually outdoors after the first hour in order to get the first crowd of people that are coming from 9 to 10 out the door uh, while the second big crowd is coming in from 10 to 12. Um, so we're going to try that and see how that works and the weather's supposed to be fine so I think that that'll be uh, so taking phys I mean taking physically the raffle items out. Yeah, of yeah. We'll we'll tell. We're going to make an announcement about you know ten minutes of uh, mm -hmm. ten and say, make sure your raffle tickets are in these things and we'll see you outside at ten o five. And yeah, then we won't bring the stuff outside. We're just going to make the announcement and drawing outside, and then they can go inside to get the things. Or well, we could. We haven't actually discussed that. I mean, we c if we have enough runners too, we can say to the first few runners, go get. Item number one and the container that goes with it, hold on to the item, give us the container, boom, boom, you're gone, you know. So anyway, we'll yeah. work out all that, but, but it's designed just to, to, to improve, because before what we did was we had people coming in for the first hour and signing up for the raffle, and then they wanted to take all their stuff out to their car, but then come back in for the raffle while all these other people are waiting who don't have access to the raffle. And so, you know, it was complicated. So anyway, we're going to try that out. Other than that... Um, Saturday's supposed to be a nice day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. So other than so that, the... the oh, no. Uh, well, we, then... Uh, worst, so uh, worst plan comes B, to worst, we'll do it in... We're going to have the, the raffle on the stage. Yes. So plan B is we'll just have people collect in front of the stage and do the right. raffle on the stage. Right. That was plan B. Right. Which I um, having gone to George Lewis's auctions where he starts the auction outside, um, it's it's more chaotic than it would be indoors. Um, plus, if it's cold, well, nice but cold, <coughs> it's not as conducive. It doesn't it doesn't bring the same money kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not <coughs> right. I think the the thing that we're thinking of is this is going to be quick. You know, it's going to yeah. be like basically. You got the thing, you pull the ticket out, and people are there, they get their thing and they go. We're not going to ask people to stand around for a long period of time outside. And I think just given the lines that we've had and the, and the volume of people, that if we can get these people out the door um, before that second group comes in, I think it's, it's going to help. You know? You can make just ask the, um, the last one we did at the senior center, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so. At that time, too, didn't we have it at 9.45? We had the auction at 9.45, indoor, or the raffle, rather, mm -hmm. so people did go out and they had to come back in. It, it was a little bit of, it was very, it was kind of messy okay. in terms of letting it's people in again, who had brought stuff out to the, it was... Because they had put their raffle tickets in the thing, well, they could show us their raffle, but we, we had to check to see that they had tickets and that kind of thing, so... Well, and not only that, but then they were wanting to come in ahead of all these other people who were waiting, and, and that take was more stuff in and some cases. And, and, and sometimes it was taking more stuff, but but more than that, it was just everyone was like, "Well, how come they're going in?" Right. I mean, it just right. made it it made yeah. it messy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so we were trying to think of a cleaner way to do it, and 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 get them out of there and so that they won't have to come in a second right. time. Right. Yeah. Another issue that, I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to Ned about this, is that I, I had hoped that we could set up a donation thing at the exit, you know, a bucket, 
because we can now, we're allowed to collect money. And I mean, we have been allowed to collect money since this summer and we haven't done it yet. And we've, in the past, we've had people say, gee, this is great, I'm walking out of here with like all this amazing toys, I'd love to give you a few bucks. And we've had to say no. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that we can have a bucket at the exit and if people want to put in a dollar or two, uh, that, that can go into our reuse funds, you know. So uh, I did speak with Ned about it, and mm -hmm. he said he called somebody and he's working on it. He will let us know today or tomorrow. If that's so Jessica was the exit one. person last time, right? Yes, and, and she's, she's agreed do to do that so again. So she would be the person. She would to be I suggested the that, right. yeah, I mean, somebody would have to be there, and I suggested that Jessica or whoever's at the exit door could do yeah, it. Yeah. And do we need a treasurer to, I mean, thinking into the future and managing these funds? What do we do with the funds once they're in the bucket? We probably we probably could use a treasurer, somebody on this committee. Because mm -hmm. we don't need a bank account. The well, city yeah, will I mean, handle the funds. I, I think we, we can talk about having a treasurer. We, we have been spending stuff on advertising, et cetera. Right. We, to my knowledge, do not have excess funds because we've, we spent, for instance, the toy swap, we get no income from. So the advertising is about five hundred and fifty dollars for the three ads that we put in. So, so, so use it to help pay for absolutely, that. spread the word. Okay. So, uh, why don't you put treasure on the agenda for next time? And uh, Mac, is there are there other things you want to express about? Uh, let's see, I have some on my mind. But any any decisions the committee needs to make? No, I don't think so. I so you're hoping to see people at four thirty tomorrow or five o'clock tomorrow? I think if you come between 4.30 and 4.45, that'll be fine. Okay, uh, great. And we'll start accepting. Uh, okay, I'd like to, cl uh, when you're done, let me know, because I'd like to close discussion on that, and Roger has one last thing. Yes, I'm done on that. I assume just on to clarify. P Peter, wait a second. Okay. Uh, Roger has a question. Well, I just want to oh. get going on these repair cafes, and I've been looking into the, the uh, repaircafe.org, mm -hmm. and uh, they do have a whole kit, which covers all kinds great. of stuff, getting volunteers. It's 45 euros, which is 56.25 at the current rate. And uh, I would like to get a decision maybe at the next meeting that we would go ahead and get their, their, their starting kit. Okay, so let's, let's, let's put it on the agenda yeah. for our next meeting, repair and, cafes. And, and I will uh, email everybody. Unless the Roger, you, you want the reuse committee to deal with repair cafes as part of the expanded. I think we should just find out what's going on first okay. and, then, and then blend it in. So why don't, instead of putting it on the agenda right away, let me just talk to, to Ned about it to see if, if if that's something that would be reasonable to purchase, either oh, from okay. grant money that is available or could be available to us or through some other means. Okay. okay. Uh, Peter, Peter, yes. Quick uh, for the Saturday event, Mac. Um, I, by reading it through, I got that people who donated either that morning or the night could only take one load and before they 10 and they then they have to come back in after 10 they can come back in after 10 actually there's a little discrepancy because some of the stuff we've sent out said basically it sort of implied that everybody could only take one load out hmm. and then some of the other stuff said you can only take out one load before 10 but after 10 you can take whatever you want and I'm fine with people taking as much as they want within reason after 10 because we want to get rid of yeah. the stuff right. you know so admission we do want to get rid of stuff. I just don't. I don't want people to, you know, the the food plate restaurants. They the <coughs> all you can eat is like a a. Magnet. It's a magnet, but it's also a challenge for people. Mm -hmm. um, and so they they sometimes stuff themselves more than they would have. So if some places are calling it all you care to eat, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what right. I mean. So right. there's some kind of again, there there's some wordsmithing that right. that might need to happen because this is a sharing event. Because you can take six loads out to your car in the first half an hour doesn't mean that that's fair or right, right for the rest of the people. Right. Do uh, I, I'd like a motion to adjourn unless there's an important point for this meeting. We didn't get to do a debrief for John's event. It's okay. Well, you and I talked. Does okay. we need to talk about it with the whole committee? Yeah, well, okay. So we'll put it on the agenda for next meeting. A motion to adjourn? Move. Um, motion to adjourn. And does anybody want a free Second pass to okay. go roll Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>